This video tutorial is going to walk you through on the function of groups within Blackboard. Now we've done a, a video already on adaptive release, which is similar to how you would use Teams in Angel. Um, so we wanted to make sure we made these videos to differentiate between groups and adaptive release. So adaptive release is more used for when you have specific assignments or drop boxes or tests that you only want certain students to see, and then you assign students per item um, as far as accessing it. So groups is actually different um, and what groups are is it still creates a group of students and you can specify who goes into what um, but it's more of it creates a uh, collaborative environment online for the students um, to actually work together. So I'm going to show you what that looks like and how you would do that. So on the left hand side here we do have groups so if I click on that, you're going to see that I do have a couple of groups already created in this course. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So I'm going to click on Create, and then I'm going to do a Manual Enroll. If I would have selected Self Enroll, that would allow the students to enroll into the groups themselves. So we're just going to call this our Test Group. Now if you go down a little bit here, um, the important thing to know, well, the first thing is this group is visible to students. Make sure that's selected to yes, and by default it should be, but just double check. Otherwise, um, creating this group is going to be um, non-beneficial for anybody. So now what you can see is you have tool availability, and these are the different items that students are going to be able to collaborate together with um, in their work area. So you can see we have blogs, we have discussions, email, file exchange, journals. So I mean, you can see there's a whole bunch of things you can use here, and it's up to you um, with how you want the students to um, use it. Now, the nice thing is, is if they have group projects, this comes in real handy because they don't have to necessarily be by each other or meet when they could do it all online here, especially with the file exchange. Um, and then you know they can create their discussion board so that they can um, collaborate together. So um, this really works well to get s for students to work together outside of class. Um, it just depends on how you want to use it. So you can set up the different things. Uh, you'll notice that some things you can make gradable. So you could make this uh, certain blogs gradable and give it a point value. Um, we could make some the journals that they are required to do, um, and then maybe a wiki. I mean, you can um, grade all of these different things. Now, you'll notice that maybe the discussion board is what you would want. Um, to grade potentially, um, but you cannot within the groups function. So to do that, you would do adaptive release and just select certain students to a specific discussion board. So now that that is done, um, really, you don't have to do a whole lot. You could do a smart view, which if we scroll back up here, these are the smart views over here, so it would list out the groups that they are also or that they are a part of, and then they wouldn't have to go into groups and click on it. They would just be able to simply click right away. So I will do a smart view for this one, so you can see what it looks like. And now we add the users. So if I click on Add Users, uh, this should be your whole roster that comes up right away. So you see, or, so we have all of the different students in here. So I'm just going to add my test students and uh, Elizabeth. We'll just add those four to this group. So I'm going to scroll down. And the submit is down here. So there's the four people that I wanted in this group. You could see what their roles are. So if you accidentally put in a professor, it would say instructor there. So I'm going to submit. And it does take a little bit. So now that is done. Now you'll see that Smart View does not show up over here, but that's because I'm not technically in the group. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out, and I'm going to go in as a student so that you can see what it looks like from that point of view. So we're going to go into the course, and here you go. Here's my groups. Now I've actually put this student in all three of the test groups that I've done, but like I said, here's how it shows up for them. So here's the test group that I've created for them, and here's all the different options that they have. So they could have the collaboration, the file exchange. So if I were to just click on something, you know, you could create a collaboration session. If you click on file exchange, you know, you could add a file for everybody to access. Now you could also go up to groups and click on your test group and then this kind of gives you an overall view of what you can do with everybody in the group. So uh, there really is a lot of things that you can do 
as a group and it is very beneficial for online collaborative learning together or for group projects. Um, so again, I just wanted to make the uh, difference between adaptive release and groups and how each are different and beneficial for certain things.